Today we're looking at the Integrated Math 1 Semester 1 Final Review for Chapter 1. Question number 1 says, while playing with toothpicks, Samantha created a pattern of tiles. Below are the first four arrangement of tiles that she made out of toothpicks. So figure 0 actually has four toothpicks. Figure 1 has seven. And if you fill in the chart over here, you'll see that it's increasing by three. It looks like it's, if you're just counting tiles, it's increasing by one tile. But if you're counting by toothpicks, it's it's, uh, you're going to add three each time. And when you graph it, you're going to get a straight line. So you could make an equation that says y equals 3x plus 4. Question B says, would figure 10 have 42 toothpicks? Yes or no? I said no. Figure 10 would have 34 toothpicks. <coughs> the 15th figure would have 3 times 15, which is 45, plus 4 more, so 49. Part G says, instead of toothpicks, what could you recount to create a pattern? I said you could use blocks, and it would just increase by 1 each time. Down at the bottom, question number 2 says, Mike and Andrea were discussing the shapes shown below. Mike felt they had equal areas but different perimeters. Andrea said if the areas are the same, then the perimeters are as well. So part A, they want you to find the area and the perimeter for each figure. So figure 1 had a perimeter of 26. I just counted the outside. An area of 24, you count how many blocks. Figure 2 has a perimeter of 20, just the outside. And the area is 24, you count all the blocks. So explain who is correct, Mike or Andre, Andrea. Mike is correct because they have different perimeters. Turn over to the top of page two. Top of page two. For each of the following relations, find the missing inputs and outputs. If no input or output is possible, then explain why not. If we plug in a 25, the square root of 25 is 5. 5 over 10 reduces to 1 half. Part B, if we plug in a negative 2, Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. You take the absolute value of that, which is positive 4, but then there's a negative sign out front, so it should be negative 4. Part C, what number can we plug in here to get out a result of 8? So what number cubed is 8? And that would be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then part D, what number can we plug in to get a 1? 1 minus 1 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 over 0 is 1. Question number four, you're going to add the exponents, you'll have x to the ninth. You're going to subtract the exponents, you're going to have 1 over x to the third. Everything within the parentheses goes to the power of 15, so 2 to the third is 8. x to the fifth to the third is x to the 15. You're going to, uh, part D, you're going to reduce the 4 eighths to 1 half, and then you're going to add the 3 uh, to the exponent up here, so you have x to the fifth. Part E, everything within the Parentheses goes to the power of 2, so 4 squared is 16. x to the negative third to the negative second is x to the negative six, so I move it down to the denominator to make the exponent positive, and then y to the second is y to the second. Part f, 2 goes into 14 seven times, and that ends up in the numerator. x to the first in the denominator, you subtract that from the 3, so it becomes x to the second. And the y to the negative second, add that to the denominator so you get y to the fourth. Number five down at the bottom, they want to draw you to draw a picture of a function. So I drew a line because I know for sure that's a function. And I just showed that it was increasing. It has a one-to-one -one correspondence where something that's not a function is where you would have multiple points uh, going through. And so uh, you, if you would have zero, four, 0, 0, and 0, negative 4 makes it not a function.